We're going to get those people up. Why don't you give them a clap while they come up? Those four people, please. Okay. That's it. We got four. Five. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. No, you were not in it. You weren't in it. Okay. Okay. Please take a seat. Now what you're going to see here you've never seen before in your life. And there's some rules. Follow the procedure, not the person. You'll break this straight away. But follow the procedure, not the person. Now I need to ask each one of you your name, and I'll start with the ladies first. What, speak into the microphone. What is your name? Sherry Darden. How do you spell it? S H E R R Y. S H E R R Y. R R Y. 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 Sherry. Mm -hmm. Your name? April. April? Mm-hmm. Yours, sir? Mark. Mark? Mark. Mark. Robert Fisher. Robert? Now, let me tell you what we're going to do here. I want the four of you to think of three things you want in your lifetime to do everything you want to do, to bless everyone you want to bless, to invest in everything you want to invest, to look after your family, to uh, give to missions, to do whatever you want. Three things, we're going to measure your vision. Now the only restriction you have is what you put on it. You can have anything you want, but it must be materialistic. I don't want you saying you want to be a nice person. Al Capone's mother thought he was wonderful. <laughs> But what we're going to do here, you can transfer to the spiritual, to the physical, and to the mental. But we're going to use this as an illustration, and you have about 90 seconds to pull that together. I know for a fact, I've only seen the program four or six times, but I know for a fact that Pastor Copeland speaks about vision a very great deal. He's known for that. I know for a fact that Pastor Pearson speaks about it. So you've had a long time to think about it. So don't think that just suddenly it's landed on you. I want you people out there to write down. Now, none of this mental stuff, you know, where you can adjust it to suit the circumstances that we're going through. You write down the four of the three things you want in this lifetime to do everything you want to do, to build a heritage for your family, three things, you have no limitations, anything that you want, you write it down. And we're going to go through this process, you're going to see something that you've never seen before in your life. I've done this nearly a thousand times around the world. And Robert, you're in the hot seat. What are the three things you want? Uh, I would like uh, a company that would generate, you know, at least a million dollars a month. You want some money. That's all right. Money. You've got the money. Okay, there's the money. What's the second thing you want? I'd like to be, I'd like to have the ability to, to fly and, and fly people around, you know, use aircrafts to... Well, what you know. are you saying here? Look at his face. He's never thought about this before. And neither of you, and it scares the living daylights out of me. Because wherever I go in any country of the world, and I meet with Christians and they talk about vision, when you really nail them down, it's hard to get it out. I'm giving you time. I'm very kind to you at the moment. I won't be later. <coughs> Thank you. Robert, you want money. What's the second thing you want? I'd like some property. You want some real estate, okay? Real estate. Now, what's the third thing you want? Are you looking at his face? Mm. This is like pulling abscess teeth. <laughs> Come on, I'm giving you plenty of time. You've had a lifetime to think about it. How old are you? 
44. 44, just a kid. Right. <clears throat> Come on, you got money, you got real estate. What else do you want? Um. Does this blow your mind? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> You see what we're getting? I mean, my Bible says, without vision, the people perish. You've been taught that until it's coming out of your ears. Come on, I'm not going to let you off the hook, Robert. You've got to come up with one other thing. You can have anything you want. The only limitation is the things you're putting upon yourself. I don't think this is abnormal. This is normal. This could take some time, yeah, couldn't yeah, it? Okay, well, I, you better come up with something real quick. Okay. Okay, you're holding up the whole process. Uh, I'd, <laughs> I'd, like, uh, I'd like to have a company. You want a business, okay. Business. All right, business. All right. Now, Mark, what are the three things you want? You've had plenty of time to think now. An at-home business. You want a business? An at-home business, yes. You want a business? Okay, a business. And what's the second thing you want? A collection of nice cars. You like some nice cars? Nice cars. Cars, right. What's the third thing you want? Uh, financial security for my grandchildren. You want some money? Money. Okay. Okay. Right, April, what do you want? I want um, a big island. You mine. want an island? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she can have it. I want a um, the number one Fortune 500 company to support any. So you want a business? No, we'll, we'll just like put business down. You'll be right. Business. You can have whatever size you want. And I want a legacy. And a legacy. But you want money. No, I want everybody, my family, to remember me from... That's not materialistic. You're not listening, okay. April. Okay. That's um, another mistake we make. Hey? Money. Money. <laughs> Same thing. They'll think very well of you. <clears throat> <laughs> Jerry, what do you want? Money, real estate, and business. Money? Real estate and business. Businesses. Real estate, state, and business. Now, what have we done here? We've got them to dream. Very simple. It took some doing. You'd think it would be easy, wouldn't you? If you put a Pandora's box in front of someone and said you can have whatever you want to have, you'd think it was easy. But let me tell you, what has taken place here is the same right across the world. And it, it scares me, it bothers me, because here we are, sons and daughters of the king. We sing, we are the history makers. Give me a break. Now, they're nice people, but I lied to you. I'm only going to give you one of the things you want. So, Sherry, what do you want? The, you can have as much as one as you want, and it's got to last you a lifetime. If you lose it all, you get nothing else, you just die. Uh, what do you want, the money, the money, the real estate, or the business? You can have as much as one of those you want. And do anything you like with it. But you've got to make a choice. Money. You want the money? Yeah. Okay, give me the money. Okay. <laughs> April, what do you want, the island, the business, or the money? The island. The island. And don't forget, you just, got a, you just got land there. You didn't ask for any housing or any vegetables or anything on there. Or... Okay, the money. No, you can have the island. There's nothing stopping you from having it. I want everything on it, then. Big button? I want everything on the island. Yeah, but you didn't say that. I told you. Okay, money. You go the money again. My goodness me. Okay, Mark, you can have the business, the cars, or the money. What do you want? Money. Money again. Goodness me. And Robert, the money, the real estate, or the business? I'll take the business. You'll take the business, okay. Okay. 
What have we done? The first thing we did was to get them to dream. The second thing we did was to get them to prioritize their dream. You can't have everything. You've got to put it in order of importance. Now watch this. Robert, how much money do you want this business to produce for you for the rest of your life? One amount of money that's going to last you all your life. You're going to pay your taxes. You're going to tithe, gifts, offerings, look after your family and do everything you want to do. One amount of money. How much? Would Five you? trillion dollars. Five trillion? <laughs> Okay. Mark, how much money do you want to do all the things that you want to do? 20 million. 20 million? 20 million. Right. And April, how much money do you want to do all the things you want to do? Unlimited. Now, now you see what she's saying? Unlimited. Someone here show me how you can hit a target that says unlimited. The word sin comes an Anglo-Saxon word missing the mark. It came from the, the uh, uh, English uh, contest for archery and when they missed the mark they waved a flag and called out sin. You're never going to hit it. You've got to be more specific. Okay. How much? See that was an easy cliche. Now she's got to think. Albert Schweitzer said before he died, what's wrong with modern man? He said he simply will not think. I can't count that high. Beban? I can't count that high. Well, well, Ten trillion. Beban? Ten trillion. Ten trillion, okay. Ten trillion. All right, Sherry, you know how much you want, Sherry. Come on. How much do you want? You're embarrassed to say, aren't you? Yes. Well, say it. Just let it come out. Okay, how about one hundred trillion dollars? One hundred trillion, okay. Okay. Now, let me tell you, they're going to change this later. But what have we done? Follow the process, not the person. The first thing we did was to get them to dream. The second thing we did was to get them to prioritize their dream. The third thing we did was to get them to quantify their dream. Ten-year-old kids can do this. Why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we thinking this way? It's pretty simple. Nothing complicated. It's not rocket science. It's, it's very, very simple. Now we've got to do an analytical study. And we'll... Uh, We'll start with Robert. Robert, you want five trillion. Yes, sir. I've got personal requirements here, and I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'm going to rate you, or you're going to rate yourself, one to ten. In your imagination, this has nothing to do with reality. This is just dreaming. In your imagination, how clearly, on a score of one to ten, could you see yourself getting five trillion dollars in your lifetime? This is not reality. On a score of one to ten. Uh, three. Three, okay. What's your ability to handle pressure when it's uphill all the way, nothing makes any sense anymore, the wheels fall off, everyone refuses to talk to you, Seven. the bank... Seven. okay. Uh, what about your perception? You've made ten major decisions in your lifetime. Remember, God is watching. You've made ten major decisions in your lifetime. How many of those decisions were 100% correct? Probably four. Four, okay. What's your daring? How game are you on a score of one to ten? Eight. Eight, okay. What's happening here? We're finding out something about this man. Probably we, we, before we're finished here tonight, we'll know more about him than he's ever thought about himself in his lifetime. Now let's talk uh, about Mark. Mark, 20 million. In your imagination, on a score of one to ten, this is not reality, how clearly could you see yourself getting that in your lifetime? Seven. Seven. What's your ability to handle pressure when the wheels fall off and the banks bounce the checks and everything goes wrong? Six. Six. What's your perception? You've made uh, ten major decisions in your lifetime. How many were 100 percent correct? Three. Three. Right. And what's your daring? How game are you? Five. Or five. Five. Okay. Let's talk with April. April, 10 trillion. What's your imagination tell you? How clearly could you see yourself getting that in your lifetime? Eight. Eight, okay. And what's your ability to handle pressure? Ten. Ten. And what's your perception? You've made ten major decisions in your life. How many were 100% correct? Seven. Seven. Okay. And what's your daring? 
Ten. Ten? Good. Let's talk with Sherry. Sherry, a hundred trillion. What's your imagination say? Eight. Eight. What's your ability to handle pressure? An eight. Eight. And what's your perception? Six. Six. And what's your daring? Eight. Eight. Okay. What has happened here? Now, they will change this later. They're under pressure at the moment. But you see, we're doing an analytical study on their life. We're having a look at what their strengths and their weaknesses are as they see themselves. But there's something else happening here. I can see God's hand here. I've done this nearly a thousand times and it's always been the same. There's never been any change. You know what I see? These people are different. There's not two of them that have ticked every box the same. You know why? Because they're unique in the universe. And nobody in the world has your voice print. Nobody has your toe print. You are unique in the universe and God loves you. And you can make a, an incredible impact on the world because you're unique. Even if the person sitting next to you has the same vision and the same aspiration, they will never do it the same because they're not you. Give them a clap, they've done well. <laughs> Sherry, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with you this time. We spoke about personal requirements there. Now we're going to talk about basic requirements. Okay. And uh, I'll explain it to you as you go along. On a score of one to 10, what's your desire to have 100 trillion? 10. 10? Okay, listen to this question very, very carefully. Um, if, uh, if you did exactly what you're doing now, and what you've been doing for the last 10 years, and you continue doing that, what's the first possibility of you getting 100 trillion in your lifetime? <laughs> Not changing anything, getting up at the same time, doing the same thing, the same routine that you've been doing for the last 10 years. Two. Two. Mm -hmm. What's your work ethic? How hard do you work? An eight. Eight. Now listen to this, this is your knowledge absorption rating. If I was to explain to you Einstein's theory of relativity or quantum physics, would you be able to absorb that and pass it back to these people without error? On a score of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself? Probably a 7. 7, okay. Now let's talk with April. April, we're looking at 10 trillion. What's your desire to have it on a score of 1 to 10? 10. 10. ten. If you kept doing everything that you've been doing for the last 10 years and you kept doing that for the rest of your life, what's the possibility of you getting Zero. 10 trillion? Zero. Zero. What's your work ethic? How hard do you work? 10. 10. What's your knowledge absorption rating? Eight, seven and a half. Seven and a half, okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk with Mark. Mark, we're looking at 20 million. What's your desire to have it? 10. 10. What's your if you are at the status quo, if you did what you've been doing for the last 10 years for the rest of your life, what would be the possibility of you getting 20 million? Minus 10. Okay. <laughs> what's your work ethic? How hard do you work? 10. 10. And what's your knowledge absorption rating? 7. 7. Okay. Robert, you're in the hot seat. 5 trillion. What's your desire to get it? 9. 9. What if you kept doing everything you've been doing for the last 40 years? Like Mark here, minus 10 or 20. Minus yeah. 10. What's your work ethic? How hard do you work? 10. 10. And what's your knowledge absorption rating? That's good. It's a 9 or 10 right there. Okay, we'll put you on the line. Well, it's spreading out a bit, but they've done a good job. Give them a good clap. <laughs> Can you see what's taking place here? In Destiny of the Third Millennium, we give you an absolutely incredible way to do this. You know, the person you ought to know the best is yourself. The great philosophers say, know thyself. Do you know really who you are? Do you know what capacity that you have? Maybe you need to do something like this in your life. Now we're, we're going to go to limiting factors. And uh, Robert, we'll ask you first. These are the limiting factors. Now you want five trillion dollars. 
On a score of one to ten, what is your cash position relative to five trillion dollars at the moment? <laughs> yeah, it's way over here. It's oh, minus you're, you're off the board. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, this is a very simple yes or no question. And remember, God is watching. Do you have a plan in writing that you can show me after the meeting the means of transportation to get the five trillion dollars, the date that you're going to achieve that in writing, in detail? Do you have that? No, sir, I don't. You're off the board again. If you had five trillion dollars, you'd have to have a world view. You'd have to know a great deal about commerce and industry, about governments, about banking, about transportation, about history. Uh, on a score of one to ten, what would be your world view? By the way, mine's a three. <laughs> I was about to say three, but I'm... I'm uh, to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, Robert, I'm going to ask you the hardest question you've ever been asked in your life. Okay. And I'm not here to hurt you, I'm here to help you. And I want each person here tonight to take this question to heart. Because I'm going to ask each one of these people this question and it's going to be a bit difficult for them. So I want you to feel with them as I ask them this question. And I want you to imagine that I'm asking you and standing about a foot from your face, looking you right in the eye. You see, Robert, when you were born, the first thing they do was count your fingers and toes. And your mother cuddled you into her. And she said, beautiful, he's perfect, he's a 10. And you know, God made you to be a 10. He didn't want you to be a 6 or 7 or 5 or 4 or 3 or 2 or 1. As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus was a 10 plus. Amen. Paul the Apostle was a, probably about a 7 plus. Now here's the question. I've got here percentage of potential. Your potential is a 10. No doubt about that. How much of that potential have you exercised in a world changing event or some major event that will warrant a score? Because if you give me a score, I want to know what you've done to warrant a score towards your potential. Okay, I think I understand what you're asking, but would you say that one more time? Okay. I want to know where your potential has been exercise so far. You are a 10 in the eyes of God. You can realize a 10 as a potential. That's where you finally should be. Right. You're over 40 years of age. How much of that potential have you exercised so far that would warrant you a score and what did you do in some major world changing event to get that score. Where am I going to put you? I'm going to be around four or five percent. Are you reckoning you'll be it, a four or that, five? You, no, you're getting on a one to ten or a zero to one. One to ten. One to ten round one. A one? Yes, sir. What did you do to get that one? I've shared the gospel with some friends and, and No, no, we're talking people. about a major event. Oh well, that's a major event in their life. No, that's not uh, hey, hey, that's not a major event. That? How has that affected the world? Where world changes? Okay. Who are these men who turn the world upside down? You're thinking too little of yourself. You've got to get a bigger perspective. You have to change the world. Each one of you have to change the world. You've got to have bigger dreams. You've got to be prepared to do what Paul the Apostle said when I pummel my body into submission. Now, at this stage, I'm at one and a half. Where are you going to put yourself? You can mark the board over here somewhere. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk with Mark. Mark, do you want to go through this process? Yes. Okay. 20 million. What's your cash position? 
If you say one, that means you've got two million in the bank at the moment. If I say one, I have two million in the bank? Yeah, well, that's a tenth. Right. Isn't it? I'm down there. No, you're off the board. Okay. Do you have a plan that you can show me at the end of the meeting of how you're going to reach, reach this 20 million? And, no, I don't. Oh, you're off the board again. If you have 20 million, you better have a world view of what's going on around the place, otherwise you're going to lose the whole, the whole lot. What's your world view at the moment? About a half. A half, I'll put you on the line. Your potential is a 10. How much of that potential have you actually developed? Zero. Right. Okay. Let's talk with April. April, we're looking at 10 trillion. Tell me when to stop, April. <laughs> <laughs> You're off the board. Do you have a plan that you can show me how you can reach 10 trillion? Well, I didn't no. think so. Okay. Uh, what's your world view? Don't have one yet. Okay. Your potential is a 10. How much of that have you exploited Zero. so far? Zero. Okay, let's start with Sherry. Sherry, do you want to go through all this? <laughs> ditto, ditto. <laughs> all the way down? On the first No. Okay, no. which one do you want to stop at? Uh, the third one. The third one? Yes. So your world view? I'd say a half. A half. Well, I've got to ask you a very simple question to okay. qualify that. Uh, do you know how much gold there is in the world at the moment? Because if you've got that, that that's elementary stuff you ought to know. Zero, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, there's less than an ounce of gold for every human being in the planet, and I've got more than my share, so okay. someone's going without. So what are we going to put... <laughs> what are we going to put with your potential? Your potential is a 10. How much of that have you developed so far that will warrant a score in a world-changing event? World-changing event? I'm going to be self-confident and say a half. A half. What did you do? Adult literacy. Oh, come Teaching on. Give me a break. Give do. me a break. That's not a, ten years. I, I, that's okay. not a world-changing yeah. event. It Did hasn't even gone out of this, this county, probably. No. Well, 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 get your, get okay. your perspective Zero. into order. Okay. Zero. Okay. What's happened here? Give them a clap as they sit down. Thank you so much. <laughs>